Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Sword Haven with me, Regaton. Let's continue around Clan Reach, starting with this guy. Old Zobin. The hoary old fellow, surrounded by woodworking tools, raises an eyebrow in your direction. Watch around the valuables, lad. There's a reason folks don't call me Zobin the Soldier. You do well to be on your best behavior. And the reason they call you Soldier is... Me being a soldier back in the day, you featherhead. What treasures are you talking about? You're kidding me, right? Can you see the craftsmanship that goes into every single one of these barrels? You appear to be proud of your craft. Aye, as any man worth his salt should be. How long have you been a cooper? I don't have enough fingers to count the years. What makes your barrel so special? Delivers a strong kick to one of the casks, but leaves no mark, not even a scuff. That. I see. Well, enough about barrel making. Did you want anything else? How much do you ask for your wares, old man? I could give you a runlet for 36 dinars. Interested? Uh, yes, here's the money. I can ask you some questions first. Nay, I have work to do. In that case, I'll leave you be. He returns to his job. Not his job, his passion. Alright, I got a rundlet. Not sure what I'm going to do with it. A small barrel for storing wine. This one is made with exceptional craftsmanship. White-haired Cooper greets you with a solemn nod. Can you see I'm busy, for Darren, Darren's sake? Let's do it. No problem. <sighs> Locked. <laughs> Easy. Stuff box, bone statuette, some fangs, a brass ring. Let's see what's out there. On a workbench for crafting. I can make a club. Never mind, I don't have some items. Fair enough. You can count on me. Hey, I want to try isometric. Oh, you still rotate the camera. Let's do it. A little disorienting at first. I'm used to the other camera, but. No problem. It looks pretty good. Time for exploration. Local woman. This wiry woman is busy with her domestic drudgery. Fixing to chat me up. You better find someone else. Why? Is something wrong? I just don't have a moment to spare for fiddle faddle. Too much work. Too little time. Do you need any help? Nay. Hers her brow in contemplation. After a bit of thinking, speak to my husband Zuva. He makes bows for his own amusement. But if you're interested in that sort of weaponry, mayhap you could peruse his stock. Might just find something to your liking. And for us, every coin helps. Yeah, Zuva told me about that. Then why are you still dilly-dallying with me? You can buy yourself something you don't need. Um, need. God's darn it. I got it. I'm just getting acquainted with the locals. We're simple lowly folk. I don't believe there's anything interesting about us. <laughs> You're right. But tradition demands I get to know the locals. One should respect tradition, my mother used to say. But also know when best to skip it. 
Sure. I uh, care to answer a couple questions for me. Like I said, you better find someone else to listen to your prattle. At least introduce yourself. My name's Danute. Uh, nice to meet you, Danute. I have to go. Stay out of trouble. This woman is strolling around with a bony knife in her hand. I? Any news around here? Everyone's on edge because of the intentions between Sword Avon and the land and nobility. A sulky sigh escapes her lips. The mainland lords won't lift a finger to quell it, neither, as long as they get their precious ore and timber. Well, that doesn't sound good. Anyway, I gotta go. The road is calling. <sighs> Locked. <laughs> Easy. Soap. And an incense pouch. Let's do it. No problem. What was that? The goat. The goat looks at you with his tongue sticking out in silent mockery. For exploration. Dare you mock me. The boy frowns. I don't know you. And I don't want to know you. The road <laughs> is calling. It let me down easy, at least. Wealthy peasant woman. You come across this rosy cheeked woman. He's humming a delightful little tune. Mm-mm, and na na na. Oh, didn't see you there. Well met, stranger. Uh, hey there. You seem to be in good spirits. It's true. I am content. And, not, and it's all thanks to Loima's Bell. What's Loima's Bell? It's a holy relic we keep down at the graveyard. You ring it, and the next day the weather's bonny. That means you're favored by the gods, and good things will come your way until the end of the season. But if it's gloomy and rainy, that's a bad sign. Shakes her head and smiles. As you might have guessed, I recently rang it and got the best weather. You should ring it yourself sometime. But what if there's going to be an eclipse the next day, but the weather is otherwise good? As long as it doesn't rain, you should be fine. At least, that's how the legend goes. And what if I ring it at the same and at the same moment it starts pouring? Dragon forbid makes a holy sign. In that case, a meeting with a deadly foe awaits you. <laughs> what if I ring it in the depths of winter when it's too cold for rain? Then you should look for snowfall. If there's none, you're in luck. If it starts falling on the morrow, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> what if the next day is clear and sunny, with a bit of light drizzle? Then your luck's gonna be forced into the middle ground. If you're usually lucky, You'll become a tad less for a while. But if you're the luckless sort, you have more good things coming your way. But not as much as, much as you'd hope for. So I wonder if it actually affects your luck then. Uh, what if I ring the bell during a terrible drought, when rainfall would be lucky for everyone? If so, the magic of the bell will compensate for the rain by making you your misfortune way worse. I gotcha. Now, one more thing. Yes? I mind if I ask a few more questions? I'm listening. Uh, what's your name? Lukna. Lukna the Third. This is the na same name as Mima and Nan. Well, what can you tell me about the village? It's a good place when there's no famine or pox. But if it's history you're after, better ask my husband. He knows it by heart. And your husband is... The village headman. Do you have any local wisdom to share? Of course. I must know that if you drink from an animal's paw print at the exact start of the witching hour, you'll be cursed to walk the land twisted into that animal's shape. But the same happens when an animal drinks from a human footprint. You ask why are the woods still teeming with tribal bandits? They're all beasts. that's why. I got it. 
Let's talk about something else. Go right ahead. Uh, that'll be all. Have a pleasant day. Turns to what she was doing. Let's see what's out there. All right, a well. Before you stands the village well. Its old cobblestone foundation is cloaked in moss. Its wooden frame dark and beaded with moisture. Now look in the well. You look into the well, but it's too deep and dark for you to see much. I throw a coin into it. A coin thrown into a well said to bring good luck. Are you sure you want to go ahead? Yes. You can barely make out the splash of the coin hitting the water. And you feel that this tiny donation has been recorded somehow. By force both ineffable and unknowable. Drink from the well. The water doesn't have any aftertaste and seems clean enough. As a matter of fact, you feel positively refreshed. Shout into the well. Now the echo of your hay is the only reply from the watery darkness below. Not thirsty right now, alright, so we can't just spam that. Uh, no time to prance around the watering hole. Duty calls. You can count on me. Let's cut back west a bit. Let's do it. No problem. Yeah, so this is Zuba's house. <laughs> is that a kid laughing? It almost sounds like a chicken in distress. <laughs> they say that barbarians are kidnapping children and selling them to the mines. If you're one of them, I know that I'll fight. Or, uh, run. Looks around. I'll scream. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Good old Zuba. For exploration. Head to his house and see what he has for pillaging. It's locked. Got big pockets. It doesn't feel right. There's no cracking this one. They're not full of stuff. You can count on me. Alright, lock chest and Zuba. I'll hopefully remember what that means later. <laughs> Let's do it. This is the herbalist. And this is the gate. Amen at. Alright. A chance to hit plus 8% might be worth it. Blood Pig Draft. Increasing my dodge chance. Push of Innervation increases melee damage. some items which is an update let's try it again all right so yeah now I can't craft it all right 
Probably should have crafted the healing potions before the other ones. Time for exploration. That's the newt again. Alright, let's go to the herbalist's house. Or for some alliteration, the herbalist house. The road is calling. Locked. Yeah, I won't think about it. Locked. Well, let's not risk it. No problem. Might be a uh, two chances, and then they call the law on you. We don't want that. Uh, when you announce your presence to the humpbacked crone, she jumps up as if scalded, and he spills the contents of the little cloth bag she sports on her girdle. Aye, are you out of your bleeding mind? Uh, Hura's Toa, take ye for sneaking up on old Delarani like that. Nearly lost my herbs, I did. What would I sell to you ingrates then? Okay, I mean, I did expect an intimidation, so we'll, we'll go that route. Bold move, scolding someone who could wring your neck in a heartbeat. The intimidation worked. Elicited respect, not fear from the crone. Oh, interesting. Not as bold as threatening someone who can turn you into a moss piglet with her dark magic. I reckon that leaves us in a stalemate. You're a fiery one, ain't ya? I like that. Reminds me of my late husband. Never trusted my potions and herbs, that one. Don't repeat his mistake. Stock up. Of all the things I do for this village, people value my wares the most. And you will too. I love to trade with you, but only if the price is right. And by right, I mean low. And by low, I mean really low. I've been milking every last dinar out of the locals for years now. And you're asking me to give a discount to a one-time customer from God's knows nowhere. The witch cackles so hard, she falls into a coughing fit. Oh, fine, show me what you've got. All my dried herbs are well preserved. Uh, it's marked as stolen. Probably can't sell that. Yeah, so anything says item for sale, I can probably just drop off. So I'm gonna hold it to the fangs just in case. Oh, whoops. Actually, instead of that... It's 90... Yeah, I'm not gonna do that. I come back with more gold. Uh, when did she say that? I remember you mentioning you're not just an herbalist. But what else do you do for the village? I forget I said anything. You youngsters aren't made from the same hardened clay we old folks are. Lowers her voice. Even a weasy sprinkle of the eldritch horrors I deal with would knock you out cold. Or worse. Oh, come on, lady. I'm really curious. And I'm not some chicken crap commoner scared of his own shadow. Don't try your trickery on me. You hear something you shouldn't, and next thing I know you'll be writhing around on the floor. Arms a-flailing, mouth a-frothing. Puffs and puffs. Didn't I tell you to forget about it? You did. Let's talk about something else. The crown turns her good ear towards you. I show her Anfor's amulet. What can you tell me about this trinket? Demoria Zur. This thing looks to be a really, really powerful artifact. I don't know what it is. But you sure as a Toa Eriats again. Better hold on to it. I'd like to see your wares. I just made something new. I'm trying to gray out that text. Alright, it's not going to. Uh, can I ask you a few questions? Uh, very well, let's hear it. Delarani is no common name. Are you a tribal? Delarani Zeni Akum. Eh, don't worry. I won't cook you in a pot or whatever you think we barbarians do. In a surprisingly somber tone. 
I spent a good part of my life around your lot. I know your madcap ways through and through. What made you choose to live in this village? My late husband did good old Vice Wilk. He swept me off my feet when he stumbled through the tribal commons. Naked as the day he was born and drunk as a sailor. Which isn't surprising, since he actually was a sailor. And a right bastard as well. Only cared about his drink and the chance to get into a fist fight. Right up until his death in a well-related accident. Sighs. I miss that man sometimes. So does it mean well-related is in a drinking well, or well-related is in it is well-related to his hobbies, drinking and fist fighting? I heard any good rumors lately. You know that Balta or you people... So your people love to plunder from Lur's rocky loins. Well, it's cursed. Valuable as they are, items made from Balta attract evil spirits. Personally, I avoid that stuff like the Seven Plagues. Oh, got it. Well, I guess it's time for me to go. Don't forget, my herbs are the best around. You say so. Time for exploration. I'm gonna stay in the village until I rest up. I get my health back. Another fight with wolves might do me in. The road is calling. The horse averts its eyes and pretends not to see you. I think I found something. I did found something. You can count on me. <laughs> Alright, where's this? Uh, Aldar's house. Let's do it. Okay. It's not marked red, so I thought I could take it. The lanky, booze-ricky man tenses up and grasps the dagger tucked in his belt. By the Silver Oracle, what do you want? I calm yourself. I just want to talk. I kind of wish option two was an intimidation check. And do we have something to talk about? It spits on the dirty floor. Yeah, didn't think so. What's your problem, anyway? That's none of your plowing business, now is it? Not reluctantly. You're right, it's not. Grumble, grumble. <laughs> There's a rumor floating around that you've been dabbling in, shall we say, less than lawful practices. Is there any way I can help? You know, floating rumors, eh? Squint suspiciously. And who are you supposed to be? Take a guess. I'm a member of the Night Army. Alright. My name's Aldar. And I might have a task for you. A task fit for a thief. Nay. A whole plow and thieves guild. You have to do a bit of snooping. A bit of traveling. And finally, if everything goes according to plan. Some good old thieving. What do you say? Traveling? Traveling where exactly? Ain't too far. Don't worry. I'd like to hear more about the snooping part. Not until you accept the contract. And what do you need me to steal? A magical, um, item of sorts. Alright, very well. Give me the deets. That's what I'd like to hear. Alright. Audar looks around, or carefully around. Word has it there's a golden chicken hidden in a nearby village. As in a hen that lays golden eggs. Yeah, just like in the fables. The eggs appeared on the black market in Swordhaven about a year ago. According to the gossip I gathered, they come coming from Grainhold, the neighboring hamlet to the west. I have a contact in Grainhold, a miller named Zirna. The feller occasionally fences goods on the side, and he owes me a favor, so you best seek his guidance. When you locate the bird, bring it to me, and I'll reward you. 
All our points to the village's location on your map. Why not go there yourself? I had a misunderstanding with some of the local cowherds. Don't know for sure if they saw my mug or not, since nobody came a-looking for me. But I don't want to test it. Can I trust this miller, Zirna? Huh, of course not. He's as rotten as they come. But Zirna is the only one in Grainhold who might be able to help you. Just don't forget to take everything he says with a grain of salt. Or better yet, with the whole bag. How much does this, does this pay? A hundred and one dinar straight into your mil mitts. Milts. Not much for a chicken that literally lays golden eggs. Hey, it's not to be solid gold. I'll pay more. Much, much more. Alright, moving on. Uh, there's something else I wish to discuss. Why are all you foreign types so darn chatty? Let me see your stock. Hope you got enough gold. Lockpicking kits. Cleaver. Some dice. Alright, so let's I had sell stolen stuff to him as well. That's all I've got. I can ask a few questions. What you want to know? Uh, what's your racket around here? Glances around. I'm on friendly terms with one barbarian feller. A sorcerer, you might say. Notice how to heal brand marks off the off the cattle that I, well, that I rustle. There's also a matter of selling artifacts, fencing stolen goods, you name it. Who's the law in these parts? That'd be the patrician guards from Swordhaven, and the high wade lots men. They sometimes patrol the border, by sometimes I mean almost never. But that suits me and my pals just fine. Hehe. <laughs> I heard any worthwhile rumors. Ask like that, nobody around here will tell you anything. Nothing worthwhile ever happens in this village. Now if it's still hearsay you're looking for, I'm your guy. For instance, you hear about those weird flashes up in the mountains. Folks say tis the fell magics of Warlock. Of a Warlock, sorry. Uh, the one hired by the mine bosses to watch over their slaves. I got it. Let's talk about something else. The rogue looks at you expectantly. I gotta go. I'll see you around. How darn odds goodbye. The drunkard greets your appearance in his uh, fusty house with low grumbling. Let's go back and talk to the herbalist again. Always pays to speak to the NPCs after you've already spoken no to them. Sometimes new dialogue pops up. Been doing it with everybody, but forgot to do it with her. Time for exploration. They're blitzing through the citizens of this town, though. I know some people don't care for the like talking to NPCs and everything. Not necessarily just a let's play, but in calling. general, but I've always seen it as each conversation is a little adventure in of itself, right? Especially in a game like this where talking to people rewards so much experience. But if you view each conversation as its own little quest, then it, I don't know, it, it feels right. Like you're always making progress. I wipes her brow. Whew. Can't talk, mister. I still have work to do. Let's see what's out there. That's why it's never bothered me to sit here and talk to all the NPCs and explore the dialogue. You can count on me. The 
Let's do it. You've seen that ear hover. Is it the... In this case, it's a chicken. I thought maybe it was like the butterfly or something. Oh no, these are leaves, not butterflies. No problem. But never mind. Time for exploration. Healing cell, that's the road is that's a really good find. That's a 90, 90 dinar find. Elmid. The scrawny middle-aged fellow gazes morosely at an old fishing net. Name's Elmid. I don't believe I've seen you around the village before. I'm Donnie the... Well, let's uh, look him up and down. Elmid has been bronzed everywhere by the sun, and his fingers are long like that of a Tyronian zither player. I'm Donnie the Fist. I just washed up on these shores. Well, in that case, welcome to Clamreach, Donnie the Fist. What do you do here, Elmed? Are you a fisherman? I found black britches, no. I'm a pearl diver. I take a deep breath and scour the bottom of the sea for my wee silvery beauties. Once a month, I take my catch into the city and sell it. You make a lot of money doing that. Huh, no sir. Would I be living like this if I did? Shrugs. I never get rich, but I don't answer to any lord either. Got any odd jobs you'd be willing to pay for? Hey, uh, maybe. Listen, last week I was waking up the clams to check their shells. I came upon this strange statuette. Ugly bloody thing, isn't it? Elmid produces a slime-colored figurine made of some porous stone. It looks like three tentacles growing up from a rock, twined together. Near the top, each of them sports a round, staring eye. Any idea what it's supposed to be? Nope. Must be some kind of barbarian thingy. I don't especially like their art, or totems, or whatever you call them. But this thing is especially awful. Looks at the statuette. Something about it gives me the shivers. Don't need people worship one barbarian god, Durain? We do, but that's different. Durain is like, you know, normal. A regular old god. Nothing too weird about him. Looks at the statuette. This thing, on the other hand, just feels alien. But what do you intend to do with this figurine? Don't really know, but it could be worth a bit of coin. Why don't you take it and ask around? If you manage to sell it, I'll split the proceeds with you. Is it wise the place you trust in a random stranger? You know, you're right. Give me 100 dinars, and I'm not risking anything handing over the statuette. If you manage to sell it to someone, we'll split the proceeds, and I'll return you the bail money. Sounds good? <laughs> uh, no. Yeah. Now listen, jerk. You better give me this whatever it is, and I'll decide if I want to split anything with you. Oh wow, it didn't work. I've, I've passed 37 intimidation checks before. Was that supposed to intimidate me? It looks genuinely irritated. I right, fine. Here's 100 dinars. Hope I won't regret this. Alma gingerly passes the statuette to you, as if fearing it might jump out of his hands. Try your luck selling it. I'd personally ask Dobro the innkeeper for advice. He's one crafty son of a fox. Uh, do you mind if I ask a couple more questions? I don't have time for this. But what are you preoccupied with? With, uh, things. Listen, you wanted something? Because if not... Yeah, I better get going. Gives you the stink eye. How about regards you with suspicion? Alright. A villager. The peasant woman strolls around mumbling to herself. Mayhap it's the pox. No, that doesn't make sense. Oh, excuse me, love. Didn't see you there. Uh, what occupies your mind so? Ah, uh, it's nothing. It's a foolish riddle told to me by Pigidius the Wise. It's her brow. I can't figure it out no matter how hard I try. 
What can you tell me about this Pigadius fellow? He's a wandering sage and an important tool of the divines. Some believe the dragon himself made Pigadius into a pea-smelling haggard old man in order to test our humility. And test it he does, every single time he strolls into the village. Hmm. Why are you so determined to solve this riddle? It's a matter of pride, love. See, after giving me this stumper, Pigadius snatched the eggs I was carrying, as payment for the lesson yet unlearned, he said. Unless I find the answer, they mean I've lost a dozen egg good eggs for naught. Alright, you try asking the other villagers. I did, and they're as clueless as I am, even our weight lot. I used to be good at solving riddles, try me. Are you sure? This one's a real head scratcher. I don't want you to end up like me, wasting time constantly mulling it over instead of working. Don't worry about me, let's hear it already. Very well, but here's how we'll do it. To avoid becoming obsessed, as I have, restrict yourself to a single guess. Then if we decide you're wrong, forget about the whole thing. Uh, we shall see. I sit by the babe who doth weep in, her, in their crib, as well as the old lord, frail in his keep. I ride to the wounded while the battle still roars, and swim for the seaman, too weak for his oars. You wish to partake of my bitter remedy, but should I dally, they'll jitter in agony. Man, it sounds like death, or time. No death. That could be time. Well, no, the, the last bit makes me think death. Yeah, it is death. Hmm. What makes you say that? Uh, death is actually an invisible ghost that literally sits near old folks and babies. Tally mocks wounded warriors and sailors. Bruce poison in a huge cauldron. Gives you a funny look. For a moment I thought you are onto something, love. After hearing the explanation, I'm not so sure. Still, every wrong answer brings me closer to the right one. Smiles. Much obliged. Take out the odd statuette. What can you tell me about this thing? It's an idol my husband fished up somewheres. To tell you the truth, I'm glad he took it. Shoots the statuette a quick glance. Give me weird feelings it did. Weird feelings. I sent shivers down my spine. You best throw it away and attend a, a dragonfire ritual too, just to be on the safe side. Hmm. I wanted to ask you uh, a few other questions. What would you like to know? Can you share your name? It's Silk. Or Soka. Looks you straight in the eyes. Just, um, don't use it to put a hex on me. Or it means you're a herring or anything like that. What do you do around the village? What don't I do? Being a mother of two rowdy little ones and a wife to a sluggard who does nothing all day long. Trust me, love. The work keeps piling on. Can you share your name? It's Silka. I heard any good rumors lately? Not lately, no. I did hear that Aldar, the village drunkard, her voice sinks to a whisper, killed his poor wife, Wanda. It was ages ago and never proven. Raises her eyebrows. But Tittle Tattle doesn't just start out of nowhere, right? I got it. Now let's change the subject. Of course, love. Alright, uh, next time. I just remembered I've got to run. Fare thee well. Let's see what's out there. She was walking away. Maybe if she leaves, I can... Yeah. Let's do it. I'm gonna risk it. Maybe we'll get a companion that's better specced in his stealth. No problem. I'll mark it on the map just in case.
like the word being incomplete. Just say lock chest. All right, I'm gonna call it here, and next time we will continue around Clam Reach. Like made a lot of progress here. Also spent a lot of money on a statuette. We're down to five dinars, which is probably not enough to stay at the tavern. Oh, we have some stuff we can sell as well if we need to. So, either way, for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.